to man. Peyton Manning stepping out. It's the Zion Show. Pass is caught by Joe. Mississippi State coming back from a disappointing 3-6-2 last year. And the sun breaks out from behind the clouds. On the last Saturday of September, Tennessee and Mississippi State and Bob Kessling, a story of a couple of rather inexperienced quarterbacks on the field today. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see exactly how Philip Fulmer handles the quarterback situation. Todd Helton, of course, took over after the injury to Jerry Colquitt. He is 1-1 one one as a starter, but in two games now, both freshman quarterbacks have played. Peyton Manning and Brandon Stewart. Tennessee would love to see Helton go all the way and win this game, but there's a chance that if one of the freshman quarterbacks get in today, both of them will get in. Meanwhile, on the other side of the coin, Derek Tate, the Mississippi State quarterback, has been bothered with a sore ankle for the last three weeks. Jackie Sherrill told us before the game, depending on how that outcome responds, is how much they will open up their offense today. Eric Molds back to receive the kick of John Vexford. Tennessee won the toss. They will defer to the second half, and they will kick it short. And the ball is fair caught at the 21-yard line. Molds is the motion man. And the give is to the fullback, Fred McCrary. And Purvis Hunt, 378. Wow. And the pass straight ahead to Fred McCrary was incomplete. And there's a flag on this play back in the offensive backfield. And that may indicate holding or something of the sort as the volunteers are clapping. I was reading my family the other night, Tim. On the offense, 10 yard penalty. Like the size of this Mississippi State offensive line and there's Al Ford's crew working the game today and my seven year old said these guys need to meet Jenny Craig. <laughs> they are so big. We had to bring the seven year old with us. <laughs> An assistant writer. Talk to Rayburn about that. Second down 24 yards to go all the way back to the seven. And problems as Tate hangs it up on the flank. It was intended for Fred McCreary. Well, at least they didn't go backwards on that play. There's a situation where on the very first possession of the game, Derek Tate might do well to get a few yards here, give the punter some breathing room, and get that football out of there. Jackie's offense averaging only 278 yards a game, nearly 90 less than last year and that was not a very good team at two five and one in the league three six and two overall they're mediocre on third down and they face a third and very long nobody but the quarterback in the backfield he's in the end zone and runs it out he's got some room escapes a couple of tackles and finally gets it out to the 18 yard line that'll be an 11 yard gain for Derek Tate. Ben Talley, the right linebacker, chased him down. And as you mentioned earlier, Bob, Derek Tate having a problem with his ankle. Uh, has It's affected his throwing, and it, it certainly has affected his quickness because this guy can really get out there and run with the football. When he pulls it down and run as a, to run as a defensive coordinator, you'd almost rather have him throw it. The punter is Andy Russ. Didn't hit it very well. Taken at the 44 by Sean Summers. He's across midfield. And Tennessee has outstanding field position. James Holloway tripping up the returner after a 37-yard kick and seven on the return. So we have a look at the volunteers offensively for the first time. They run a multiple offense with Todd Helton running things. Little man Stewart, the big story in the backfield. Mose Phillips, a tough fullback. And up front, they've got some good people. All of them back, Lehman, Mays, Miller, Smith, and Ratliff, all veterans, very seasoned. And Helton with the left hand out to the left side. It's Nilo Sylvan. Charlie Davidson refused to let him go. He put a bulldog hold on him, and then about five more members of the kennel showed up. The 4 3 defense of Mississippi State you may say wait a minute that's a three four but Wesley Lisi the outside linebacker does play down as a defensive end. They've got some good guys back there six career interceptions for Charlie Davidson. Walt Harris has eight interceptions in his career. They've already 
picked off four this year. And there's James Stewart. He's down to the 41 yard line. Andre Bennett from free safety had to get him around the ankles. He broke a couple of tackles on the way. Now he was the leading Tennessee's leading ball carrier as a freshman and then Charles Garner arrived on the scene. Nice hit there by Andre Bennett and uh, Stewart and Hayden. They didn't play as much after that and they are certainly anxious to get the football this afternoon. Seven yards a carry for Stewart this year. Helton on a ball tipped and hung up there for a while. It appeared that Nilo Sylvan had a chance to catch it but he couldn't get it cleanly and that ball hung dangerously in the air for a while. There was a mistake in the Mississippi State secondary on that play and the wide receiver for Tennessee was absolutely wide open. There was no one close to Sylvie. Tom Hutton had a 49er against UCLA. Nobody back to receive the kick. The deepest Bulldog is at the 25 yard line. Looks like he's pooched it pretty well. Inside the five and the Volunteers will down it. At about the two and a half yard line, Scott Gallion down there, number 93. Welcome back to Starkville. We're three minutes and 37 seconds into the ball game. No score. Each team's had a possession. And Mississippi State starting very deep in its own end with Derek Tate running this pro I offense. Motion man was Bernard Ewell. And a big hole for Kevin Bowie. He cracks it out to the 10 yard line before middle linebacker Scott Gallion stopped him. Look at the right side of this Mississippi State line. You've got Hayes in there. Hunt. Good quickness displayed by Bowie. He's got good quick feet. Michael Davis more powerful. Bowie a little bit more elusive. And he gets it out. A nice gain on first down. Gives him a little breathing room. Now it's second and. Three. Yeah, it's pretty amazing to see a guy who only averages 3.4 a carry up up among the career leaders in yardage. He just doesn't break it that often. Quick get to the fullback, Fred McCreary. And an interesting trend here early, Tim. In the first two games this year, McCreary had only carried the ball twice for 18 yards. He's already carried it today a couple of times. He's a good pass catcher, and he has their only receiving touchdown of the year. Both these fullbacks are similar. McCrary on one side, Mose Phillips on the other side. Both good blockers that catch the ball well. But their primary purpose is certainly not carrying the football. A couple of tight ends, Kendall Watkins and Brandon Mann on third and one with a single back set. Tate will keep it himself and follow the left guard. Jason Wisner over there. Pull the calf muscle just before game time. So we may see Brad Ainsworth who backs him up a bit. Jesse James the left tackle a preseason all SEC as is center Brian Anderson who's nursing an ankle sprain he suffered against LSU. And Philip Homer's defense comes up big it'll be fourth down for Mississippi State. They didn't make it. And again another deep punt. For sophomore Andy Russ out of Nashville. Of course, Billy Williams is injured. He's not available for kick returning, so it's Sean Summers, and there's another bad looking kick. This one taken on the offensive side of midfield. And down to the 42 yard line. Clay Mack, six foot junior out of Dallas, the man injured on special teams, still being worked on by Paul Mock and the Bulldogs training crew. Great field position for Tennessee. And number 24 is Aaron Hayden. 11 yards on that play. He's a six foot senior who goes 214. He backs up James Stewart at tailback. He's gained over 1,250 yards in his Tennessee career. Aaron Shotez Hayden. Right on. And a first down at the 30. Tennessee approaching the orange zone where they had no success last week. Same man gets the call off the right side this time. And I think the biggest surprise from the game last week, Bob, uh, you know, if there are any surprise when you play the number one ranked team in the nation, was I really, I was not 
convinced that Tennessee's offensive line wouldn't be able to handle the Gator front. And uh, you know those four down linemen for the Gators proved to be immovable. Well, they gave up five sacks alone last week. Seven on the year after only 11 all season in 93. First carry of the day for the fullback Mose Phillips. And the volunteers on the move. Let's check in downstairs with Bob Kessling. Yeah, we'll give you an update on Clay Max situation. He twisted his ankle, but he has a lot of pain right above the ankle on the bone. So they're going to take him to the hospital and get him x-rayed before they let him come back and play. But they think it's just a twisted ankle. Out of the eye, third down for the volunteers. A fake pitch, quarterback keeper off the left side, and Don Helton did not make it. He had to get to the 20-yard line. Dwayne Curry, the left inside backer, and the right outside backer, Reggie Wilson, teaming up for the stop. And a field goal attempt coming up. Todd Helton fakes it to Mose Phillips and decides to keep good decision. You know, Johnny Harris was hard upfield. Uh, good defense by Mississippi State. Fourth down and a good field goal attempt coming up. John Bexford's longest this year, a 44 yarder against Georgia from the near hash. This is a 38 yard kick. And he misses it to the left. Should have been a chip shot. Had plenty of distance, but he pulled it. And the game remains scoreless. Eight minutes in. And so they miss a 38 yard field goal and Mississippi State takes over with for them has to be great field position their own 21. And last year. Bexford was exceptional this year he's struggling to find the, the goal post. Uh, Tate slipping down. He was pretty good against LSU wasn't he Threw for a touchdown. He had 46 of Mississippi State's 101 yards rushing in that game. Second and 17 in a quick opener. Michael Davis the ball carrier and not much there. Shane Burton the left end. 6'5", 272 junior. Mississippi State going with a draw against Tennessee. Larry Marmy and the defensive coordinator at Tennessee and Dan Brooks the defensive line coach good on calling those stunts underneath and it ran Shane Burton right down into that draw. Mississippi State doesn't want to do anything early in this game to put themselves in the hole. And so they're not going to take a lot of chances. They haven't got to the 20 yard line yet. Third down and 19 into the end zone and he throws it out to the right side complete. But Michael Davis taken down for a big loss and Mississippi State continues to move backward offensively. Sean Summers was right there for the stop. Second and long it was a draw third and long. You see the rush inside but Tennessee well prepared. Sean Summers right in the middle of it never gave it a chance to develop great tackle. And a third punt coming up for Andy Russ. One of four Tennessee players on the Mississippi State roster. He's been the busiest guy out there. Hangs up a nice one this time. Fair catch and not enough room for the fair catcher. It looked like Robert Isaac made contact with the return man Sean Summers a 40 yard kick. Obviously signaling fair catch. Just brushed him. Silly mistakes that you as a coach you just hate to see that. Good hustle to get down there and then uh, know the rules. Contact 15 yards Ooh. first down. Tennessee in better position than ever before. They'll have first down inside the 33 when we come back. Bob Carpenter Tim Foley Bob Kessling and Jackie Sherrill. He's the guy under the gun. His team's at terrible field position. First down volunteers. Bootleg Helton to the right side. He's a left hander. He passes the line of scrimmage has to run it and he's got the first down. Flags fly. Might have been a late hit on the far sideline. Flag on the play. 
Good job of coverage by Mississippi State. Nice fake by Helton, but Mississippi State stayed at home, and Helton had nowhere to go with the football. Mm. The run, 10 yards from the spot of the foul, still first down. From the spot of the foul, though, mark it. Nice fake takes it out to the right. You can see Joey Kent coming across. He's got horn number 82 looking for them. Gamina's in the way. Johnny Harris is in the way down the field. Wall Harris had Sylvan covered. And so Helton decides to go with it. And there you see the uh, block in the back. It was kind of a block in the back. A block in the side, kind of a blocker. First down at the 34. So they get first down back and lose about a yard and a half. Great play in the backfield. Scott Gamina, the outside linebacker, flags on the field. James Stewart on the carry, and it was a brief one. Now, there was a block in the back. We got a good shot of a block in the back this time. Holding on offense on the run, 10 yards in the spot of the foul. Still first down. Nilo Sylvan, his assignment is to block Scott Gumina, but Gumina's blitzing. Sylvan can't get there, and so he pushes him down in the back. Tennessee has started its drives today at the Mississippi State 49, the 41, and now the 32. It'll be first and 21 as they're backed up to the 45 yard line. Single back set with a slot to the left. Three wide receivers. And Stewart following David Horn, the tight end. He's got good yardage on first down. All the way down to the 33, maybe the 32. That'll get back 13 of those yards on the first play. Now some people might be critical of this. They might call this conservative play calling. But James Stewart, when you've got a, uh, a spread out defense with an offensive line like Tennessee has, I mean, you're, that's pretty good odds. So a gain of 12 yards, now you're back at second and 10, and the first down is within your grasp again. Helton looking out to the right side for Stewart. He's got some room, and there's a block in the back. <laughs> Offensive lineman Jeff Smith was out there. Looked like Johnny Harris was the man he flattened with a blow from behind. Good hustle by 310 pound Jeff Smith getting out there. This was set up beautifully. Helton lets it go and it's open. Smith hustling out there. And he, uh, next Johnny Harris. Good hustle by Jeff Smith. And uh, I'm sure James Stewart could have just used him as a shield and cut back inside. Well, that's a big shield. That is a big shield. 6 3 3 10, all SUC last year. Second down and 15. Helton under pressure and he throws it away. There's a flag. The flag did not come from any officials on the far sideline. It came from the officials standing right next to the quarterback, Scott Gamina and Wesley Leasy. Coming up from the outside backer positions to sandwich Todd Helton. This time Bill Clay, defensive coordinator for Mississippi State, decides to come after Tennessee. Nobody open. Helton dumps it out of bounds. And I'm sure that's something that they have been working on. We just got to get somebody in the area. There's Pete Jenkins. He's a defensive line coach at uh, Mississippi State. Developed a lot of great players in his career. And Tennessee calls a timeout. They're facing a third and 20. Their offense has just been a nightmare so far today. I'll call, although their defense has made it pretty much the same way for Mississippi State. You know, Bob, we talked to Jackie Sherrill yesterday. He understands this is only Todd Helton's third start. He said early in the game they're going to throw a lot of things at Helton that he's never seen. Remember, they've had two weeks to work on this scheme, too. Third and 30 with four wide receivers. Quarterback draw. He'll get some of it back. Spun around two different times. And inside the 40, a 13-yard gain. That may not be able to get them into the range of John Bexford. Well, there goes Helton limping to the sideline. 
uh, Tennessee coaching staff have seen more limping people this year than they have in the last couple of years. It seemed like they, as our as our word coach Kim Anderson would say, they've had a plethora of injuries and uh, yeah, a lot of them too. Yeah. <laughs> That's Scott Gamita back there to receive the kick. He did a lot of kick returning last year. He signals fair catch and lets it go over his head. Oh, and it should have been down inside the five. The position has been their enemy so far. Three wide receivers on first down. Kenny Causey the motion man. And a give to the single back, Michael Davis. On the corner. He is grabbed by Jason Parker, the free safety, who made the second team all league squad last year. And he's the Volunteers' leader in tackles. But, Tim, that's not a good sign when your free safety leads the team in tackles. No, it's not. And this is, uh, you see, Mississippi State going with two tight ends. They're trying to get the Tennessee secondary involved in support. They're trying to lure them up, get involved in the running game. And then you can expect them to try to you know, hit a big one on him sometime uh, early in this first half, I think. No gain, second and ten. Gerald Daniels in motion. Tate with plenty of time. He will air it out up the middle. And it is intercepted. Ronald Davis, the right cornerback, with a brilliant catch. And Tate has thrown his first INT of the year, first pick for Ronald Davis. This is a beautiful a ball. And beautiful Peyton ball Manning's coming in. Thrown by Tate. And Ronald Harris is supposed to have had a hamstring problem and a knee problem. There was a question about whether he's going to play or not. You knew that they would test him early, and he certainly performed fantastically there. What a great catch, especially by a defensive back. Yes, sir. Good job, Ronald. Peyton Manning, the true freshman from New Orleans, one of the Volunteers' offense. To the near side, Aaron Hayden with some big room. And there's a flag back at the 31-yard line. Johnny Harris, the strong safety on the stop. A penalty filled. First quarter with a minute 39 remaining. Holding his offense on the run, 10-yard penalty from the spot. First down. Yeah, and these these Tennessee penalties haven't been severe, you know. I mean, they've been like nudging in the back, really, not really blocking in the back, and uh, so it's been a t it's been a tough first half so far for the Volunteers. As you look at some of the best talent in America that is now uh, wearing a white or orange jersey. Yeah, if you're not an All-American, don't bother to apply. There's an end around. Nilo Sylvan trying to get loose over on the far side. Good containment by the Bulldogs. A host of them out there. You see Wesley Lisi, 94, 44, Dwayne Curry, the inside linebacker. This is a play that had worked successfully, that has worked successfully in the past for Tennessee, but Mike James does a nice job of staying at home. Eventually turns it in. Finally, help arrives in the form of Leslie Ratliff. Lock runs with Finally 45 Curry makes a stop. seconds to go first quarter. Will anybody have positive yardage in this quarter? Manning to the left side. Beautifully thrown ball. And down the left side is Kendrick Jones. And he will score. A 76-yard touchdown play. And the freshman quarterback comes in and gets it done. Now, do you notice that? <laughs> you know, most guys are jumping up and down and doing back flips, waving at the crowd. Manning whips it out there, slips it past Davidson. Jones goes all the way. And Manning, Manning walks off the field like, hey, this is what's supposed to happen. No problem. Composed individual, no question about it. Hendrick Jones. First touchdown catch of the season, second of his career. Expert for the extra point. Lance Wheaton the holder, Mark Holland the snapper, and this one is perfect. And in the final 30 seconds of the first quarter, finally somebody does something offensively, and it's the freshman quarterback who starts it off. The Manning zings it out there, and Davidson is trying to knock it down. He's not quite close enough, and now he's behind the power curve, trying to catch Kendrick Jones. 
And you see Johnny Harris coming over trying to knock Jones off and he takes out Davidson too and that's all the way. Big play for Tennessee. It came a minute 20 after the Ronald Davis interception. And Peyton Manning throws for his first career touchdown. A lot of folks think there will be dozens more before he hangs it up in Knoxville. Archie's son getting it done. Well, he has, he's bigger than Archie, stronger than Archie, and he has had the benefit of living in Archie's house. So, you know, when they talk about these things, he's got the benefit of having a guy that was one of the most, one of the best passers that ever played, teaching you what to do, teaching you the little things. 69 yards in a couple of plays. They actually had negative yardage on the first play of minus seven, and then they go 76 yards. And it's seven nothing, Volunteers. Didn't take long after the INT by Davis. Experts kick. He'll pooch it again. It'll be taken at the 21 yard line. And evidently a fair catch was signaled. Aubrey Meek, a tight end again. Number 81. Eric Molds, the motion man. Tate with some play action. And time. Up top. That's Molds. And he's out to the 49 yard line. Eric Molds, the leading Bulldog receiver. That's his ninth catch of the year. He's averaging 15 per catch, and that one covered 28 yards. Talking to Bruce Arians before the game, he felt like they had this route on the Tennessee defense. You got to give. Austin a little bit more help. You want to get that cornerback back a little bit deeper. First down at the 49. Molds the receiver, motioning near side. Give to the deep man, Davis. Sheds one tackle at the line of scrimmage. Shane Burton had a shot at him. And then George Kidd, the linebacker, waited for him. And that should be the last play of the first quarter. Kevin Bowie was the ball carrier. And the first quarter comes to a close with 30 seconds left. Kendrick Jones caught the long touchdown pass. And the Volunteers lead it on the road 7-0. Tennessee leads Mississippi State 7-0 as we start the second quarter. Todd Hilton has suffered a right knee sprain. They don't think it's serious, but they're going to hold him out just for precautions. They will, they will take a look at him at halftime. But if they can hold him out, they will. So it looks like the Tennessee freshmen are going to get a chance to shine. Yeah. Here in the state of Mississippi. Second quarter underway. A couple of tight ends for the Bulldogs as Moltz goes motion. Second down and five. At the Tennessee 46. And Bowie's got big running room around the right corner. Kevin Bowie, a 6'1 senior out of Pahokee, Florida. First down at the 33. Dogs on the move. Bowie again. Bouncing off the left side. And he got deep enough that a secondary man, Raymond Austin, had to force him down with help from Scott Gallion. We saw Kevin Bowie in 1992 uh, injure his knee in the season opener against Texas, and uh, he certainly has responded from that. He was a second leading rusher last year and then hurt his knee again against Alabama. Good quickness and power. Good average today. Second and four. Tate pitching to Bowie, waiting for a block, and it appears he has the first down. Tate play action, and then a little shove outside. McCrary, he kept his balance for about the final four yards. He turned it from a four yard gain into about an eight yard gain. Very versatile fullback out of Naples, Florida. And as we pointed out, a lot like Mose Phillips of Tennessee. Good hands, and he does a good job blocking, but uh, what he does best is catch the ball and then run with it. Yeah, they throw to both fullbacks, Tennessee and Mississippi State, more than they hand off to him. Fred had five receptions for 36 yards against LSU two weeks ago. A couple of tight ends on this play and a couple of flags as well. For the ball snap, movement by the offensive line, five yards, still second down. 
Second and seven. That will make it. Well, Looks like the right guard. Henry McCann. Now that's Purvis there. That's Purvis Hunt. That's our 378 pound friend. He slimmed down to 378. He should be able to get going a little early though, right? So be able to I get his engine be, a little earlier. I wouldn't want to be the guy in front. Second and seven. Bowie feeling his way around the line of scrimmage. Maybe a couple of yards off the left side. Jackie Sherrill pacing. He knows his offense hasn't been that good this year. Only 110 yards a game on the ground. Let's look at him working there. You see number 59, Brad Ainsworth. Purvis Hunt, Dan Hoover. Bowie patiently waiting for something to open up that time. Very well played by Tennessee. Nothing really cracked open. Now you've got a third and five. At the 17. Bowie, the single back. Watkins and Mann, couple of tight ends. Tate taking to the tailback. Down the middle to tall. Pass interference in the end zone. Ronald Davis covering Chris Jones. They brought Jones in from the outside. Moles over the middle. Davis Tate has had a little bit of trouble throwing on that bad ankle. This one sailed a little high on him. I'm not sure that Chris Jones could have got to this, but uh, it's close enough that Davis makes a move and he grabbed him with his right arm. Yeah, I think you're right, Tim. Ball was at the fingertips, close enough. Ruled. By the back judge, and here we go. 12 minutes to go. First half, Mississippi State, first and goal at the three, down 7 0. Watkins and Mann, couple of tight ends in there. As they run out of the eye and send Ewell in motion. Second man, Bowie. No, sir. Big defensive play. Steve White, the right end, number 64. And that defensive line hasn't done much this year. All four guys put together had a total of only 37 tackles in their first three games. Well, this was a serious concern, I think, for Tennessee coming into the season. You lost Wilson, Yadkowski, Bonham, and Morris. You replace them with four uh, inexperienced guys that just don't have that necessarily the smell of the smoke, the smell of game time. And uh, now Larry Marmy has five of them in there right now in his goal line situation. And Tennessee has called a timeout. With 11.26 to go first half of the Volunteers leading by a score of 7-0. Philip Boomer thinking about his defense, trying to keep ahead in this game. And in the middle there, Larry Marmy, who's been with John Cooper at Tulsa and Arizona State, head coach at Arizona State for a while. For seven years, Larry Marmy. Second and three. Tate, nothing on the flank. He goes straight ahead and almost scores. He's down inside the one. Steve White, the right end, knocked him down. And it'll be third and about a foot for Mississippi State. They've only been able to score 20 points in their first two games. They'll call a timeout and make sure they get it right. Jimmy Helms talking to Derek Tate. Jackie Sherrill, uh, they're all talking to Bruce Arians upstairs. By the way, Bruce wanted me to say hi to his dad, Bert, who is uh, recovering from from a heart attack, actually, and uh, was in the office yesterday with Bruce as he talked to his mom. And so, Bert, we hope you're feeling good, man. And your son hopes they can get a touchdown here. They need one. Bruce, of course, the former head coach at Temple. Tennessee leads it 7 0. This is a series that's been often played on a so called neutral side at the Liberty Bowl in Memphis. They played there 14 times. By the way, the announcers for this game, selected and compensated by Jefferson Pilot Sports, that broadcast a copyright presentation. Any use without the express permission of the Southeastern Conference at Jefferson Pilot Sports is prohibited. 
on a gorgeous Saturday late in September. Here we go third and goal. Tate will do it himself. No signal yet. Now there's one touchdown Bulldogs. Derek Tate with his first rushing touchdown of the season. Well, when Wisner's in there, they usually like going to the left side, James and Wisner. That time he snuck behind Purvis Hunt, Melvin Hayes, and Dan Hoover. Got a little bit of movement, and that's all they needed. Tim Rogers, the point after. And with four minutes gone in the second quarter, the Bulldogs have tied the game seven up. Derek Tate completed a 28 yard pass to Eric Molds that was the key play of that long drive. We'll summarize it for you in a minute. Andy Russ the punter handles the kickoff chores. And the left footer. Down to the one and a half yard line Milo Sylvan straight ahead. Not much there. Holding on for dear life was James Holloway. Nice play on special teams after a 20 yard return. That drive started at the Mississippi State 22 in four and a half minutes. They went 10 plays to tie the game and again the key play that catch by Eric Moulds that was good for 28 yards. And an impressive drive by Mississippi State which hadn't been able to get anything going. They certainly needed to get something going at that point after the big pass and catch by Manning and Jones. First down for Peyton Manning and the Volunteers. Is that an incompletion or a fumble? Incomplete pass, and let's get it down to Bob Kessling. Bob, we give you an update on Clay Mack. We told you that he had twisted his ankle and had a hurt right above the ankle. Well, they x rayed it. He has broken a small bone above his ankle, so Mississippi State is minus one of its defensive backs. He's out for the rest of the game. And it looks like Todd Helton also is out. They've got his knee bandaged now and have ice on it, so it looks like it'll be the freshman quarterbacks the rest of the way for Tennessee. Peyton Manning with a touchdown pass to Kendrick Jones. And he gives it off to Jay Graham who just checked in. Flag on the play as Graham's got good yardage out to the 33 yard line. 12 yards for the sophomore out of Kannapolis North Carolina. But is it coming back. Holding on the offense during the run 10 yards in the spot of the foul still second half. This has got to be driving Phil Fulmer nuts. You know, a former offensive line coach who sent 17 guys to the pros. It's going to be driving him crazy. The strength of this team is in the offensive line, his proficiency. Now, Phil, <laughs> he knows how to talk to those big guys. He's had a lot of practice. Offensive guard on the volunteer Liberty Bowl team of 71 that went 10 and 2. Second and 21. Look at those penalties. Better than 120 oh. yards combined so far. Oh. What a hit that was. Jay Graham, the ball carrier. Wesley Lisi with a monster hit. Looks like Jimmy Miles is slow getting up. This was a Graham sandwich right here. Good move by Lisi. Look at that athletic ability. He comes back over the top, and you're right, Bob. It's uh, Jimmy Miles got hit on the head, and he's a little slow getting up. The thing that amazes me most most about watching these games and these young men perform is just how quick. You know, just the fact that they're big, that's one thing, but quick and explosive in their change of direction. As you look at Todd Helton there, who is an all-American baseball player at Tennessee. Pitcher, first baseman, good hitter. Yes, sir. Jimmy Miles evidently okay. That's good news. Third down and 19. Let's see what the freshman quarterback can do here. They're coming hard. He's got time. Up over the top. And good coverage out there in midfield. Joey Kent, the indebted receiver, and Walt Harris was ahead of him, step for step. Well, once again, a break for Mississippi State. I'm not sure if you can call a penalty a break. I don't know if that's fair, but uh, 
You know, Tennessee comes out with a big play that's called back, and then they're in the situation backed up. They're not going to take a lot of chances, so they try to air it out on third down. An interception at that point is the same as a punt. Bernard Ewell averaging eight yards a return to receive the kick of Tom Hutton. A side-winding kick that will go out of bounds. Officials stepping it off. It'll be first down Mississippi State at the Tennessee 38. Only 26 on the kick. And the Dogs now have field position. Best Mississippi State field position till now, their own 22. Tate wants it all on first down. And the ball is intercepted in the end zone. Ronald Davis again. His second of the day. Here's a guy who didn't get to play for a while because of a knee injury early in his career. Then he was a right receiver for a couple of years, and that's why he can make these catches. Well, this is a fantastic play by Ronald Davis. They're trying to, Arians and Cheryl trying to strike deep early and really had a better shot at Causey. Causey had a chance to get open a little bit, but uh, just a beautiful job by Davis going up and taking the ball away from the wide receiver, Chris Jones. Usually it's the other way around, but excellent play by Ronald Davis, who is supposed to be hurt a little bit. Yeah. He was a wide receiver for two years and caught almost 300 yards worth of passes for the Volunteers. Gaines, little man Stewart. Not very little. He goes 6 1 2 18, but his dad gave him that nickname at a very early age, and he's worn it forever. He was also wearing Dwayne Curry and Reggie Wilson all over him. And it'll be second down, and they'll call it 11. Nine minutes to go before halftime in a tie game. Stewart again, getting outside. Now he cuts upfield, and his shoulder pads will hit beyond the 33-yard line. Free safety Andre Bennett on the tackle after a 14-yard gain. You see, we'll watch number 44, Dwayne Curry, in here. He's uh, replacing Juan Long, who is a great linebacker from Mississippi State for a number of years. And Curry is a sophomore from Pascagoula, freshman All-SEC last year, still learning his way around, great leadership capabilities, and a fine young athlete. Hey, speaking of Curry, Bill Curry knows all about him. He had 20 tackles against Kentucky last year. On the run, great throw by Manning. Up to the left side. Looked like Marcus Nash, the true freshman, with his first catch of the year. Good fake by Manning. And he is being chased there by Corey Sears and rifles it up the sideline. Andre Bennett was coming. He was on the move to try to pick that ball off. Didn't quite get there in time. Manning, Manning got it in. Beautiful play. A throw. Stewart, and he'll get about five yards straight ahead. That was Stewart. They're going to get a big run, Bob, on that cutback one time. I mean, Mississippi State's doing a good job covering up, but they've come close several times in terms of ripping off a big, big run. At the 40 yard line, gain of five, second down, and five. Brandon Stewart on the sideline, of course, the other one of the. Uh, Mega big guns that Tennessee has. Second and five. James Stewart and the Bulldogs in mass. Nothing much out on that left flank for James Stewart. Wayne Curry was there, Jimmy Miles. And this defense will will start to form for Mississippi State as uh, time goes on. Both of these schools losing a premier defensive lineman up front and, and struggling a little bit early on in the season. Third down and six. And a little look pattern. Nothing out there. James Stewart covered well by Andre Bennett. They lined up the tailback in a slot position. He went about three yards downfield and turned toward the outside. Ball got there in a hurry, but so did the tackler. Bill Clay deciding to come after Payton's 
Peyton Manning in this situation, and uh, Manning makes the read, dumps the ball to Stewart, and Andre Bennett, nice tackle, sure-handed tackle, and now we're going to have a, a punt from the 40. Tom Hutton with Scott Camina back at his own 10-yard line. Wobbly kick coming up short, and a fair catch at the 12. Only 28 yards on the kick. You know, if you look at the special team numbers from today so far, Tim, you'd think it was raining, the wind was blowing, it would be a miserable day. Here we are on a beautiful 67 degree afternoon, and nobody can kick the football so far. Well, Tennessee has been in a situation three of the times where they're just trying to pooch it in there. Now, the one time he had to bang it out, he didn't hit a very good one. So I know Dick O'Brien, who's a kicking coach at uh, Tennessee will be talking to these young men at halftime, trying to settle them down. First down for the Bulldogs at their own 12. 6.14 to go, second quarter. And there's Davis. Haven't heard much from him today. It's been mostly Kevin Bowie. But Michael Davis, the senior from Morton, Mississippi, has 11 on that play. And he is a truck. Good job there by Purvis Hunt. Nice tackle by Sean Summers. Nice, sure tackle because this, that young man is not easy to knock off his feet. He had 900 yards rushed in the first full season he played. He's never played against Tennessee, by the way. His teams haven't played since 91, and he did not see action in that game. He's seeing some now. He's outside up around the 38, maybe the 39-yard line. 15 on that carry. 26 on the last two plays, and Sean Summers had to tackle him in the secondary. It's time to go into the left side. Kendall Watkins, number 83, the tight end, and Jesse James opening up a hole for him, and in where Bowie might make a move and elude that defensive back, Michael Davis puts his head down and goes. Came into the game with 1,914 career, and again, that's very impressive for a guy who averages only three and a half a carry. He's got a chance to score more touchdowns here than any running back in history. Third consecutive tote for the senior who goes 6 1, 222. So he's got 31 yards on the last three carries. Scott Gallion, the middle linebacker, on the spot. And the dogs doing what they do best, chewing the clock up on the ground. Maryland's picked up a field goal. Wake has a touchdown. Rutgers given Penn State a problem today. Not the same for the Hoosiers against Wisconsin. And the Rebels lead the Bulldogs early in SEC action. And a little give to Davis. He had to get just short of the midfield stripe for the first down. And he'll be short. Tyrone Hines, a sophomore out of Brownsville, Tennessee, who backs up Scott Gallion. There's number 47 making the tackle. See how the dogs feel about a third and two. They don't want to give up the football just yet. So they give it to Davis. And forget it, he won't make it. Had to get to the 49 and a half yard line. And a host of volunteers, led by the strong safety Sean Summers, who makes his fifth tackle of the day, getting it on it. Good job by Summers and the linebacker core. They stand up offensive line and good fill by Summers. He was playing quarterback, but also backs up at strong safety. A good physical young player. Lovey Smith has to be proud of him. He's doing a good job in there today. There's our man, the Oak Ridge boy, who started against Florida last week and again this week. And the volunteers were coming. It forced a short kick. And it's out of bounds at the 21. First down, 21 yard line. Eric Hayden, Aaron Hayden trying to get outside. They get a couple of yards before a bunch of dogs wrestle him down. Dwayne Curry, Torrance Jackson. Dwayne Curry, preseason second team All SEC performer. Just a sophomore, as Tim mentioned earlier. He made the all freshman team in the league last year when he had 95 tackles, second best on the team. Despite starting only six games. Nobody there. So out to the left side. And it's David Horn, the tight end on the reception, his fourth of the season. 
That's what you call the rather disinterested looking play action in the backfield. There really wasn't a back anywhere near Peyton Manning. A little fake, but that didn't stop Mississippi State from taking a step to the left, and that's all that David Horn needed to get out in front of Andre Bennett. David Horn, 6'4", 248 at tight end. First down at the 36. Whoa! Aaron Hayden losing the ball. Scott Gamina had a touch on it. And who will end up with it? Mississippi State should have had the football. Peyton Manning fell on it. Scott Gamina, the outside linebacker, number 26, had a real shot at it. Gamina's a heads up guy that's a punt returner and linebacker. And, you know, he was thinking six points, making about making a big play, couldn't find a handle on it. And Peyton Manning comes back and scoops the ball up for Tennessee. Prevents Mississippi State from getting a great opportunity here with two minutes left. Second down and 18. Great drop for Manning. Up the middle, crossing pattern. And he's got Joey Kent. 15 yards on that reception. Joey's second of the day. He has 12 on the year. And that appears to be Todd Helton leaving the field. Crutches now. After he banged up that right knee. There's some baseball scouts pretty worried when they see that shot. That's for sure, because he's one of the top baseball players in America. Third down and three. Manning with good protection. Forcing it in there, and it's still caught. Charlie Davidson slamming a piece of equipment to the ground in disgust. Joey Kent, great job of taking it right away from him. And this was a timing route thrown right on time, and Charlie Davidson is all over Joey Kent, and Manning is able to get it in there anyway. This is confidence in your receiver. Kent comes back at the ball to make the catch. Minute 10 to go on a first down play. It's too tall for the near side, or rather far side. Courtney Epps, a redshirt freshman out of Dallas. He was a high school All-American a couple of years ago at Carter, one of the great high school programs in the Metroplex. Peyton Manning, though, having a good day. He's averaging about 18 yards, 14 per completion. Fulmer and uh, David Cut Cut would have to be happy with what they're seeing. I think they've been happy with what they saw from their freshman quarterbacks, though, this uh, in the first three games, too. Blitz is coming. Manning dumps it off, and it's too bad for Tennessee. Had Aaron Hayden been able to catch that ball, he had a convoy of blockers ahead of him. But Peyton didn't have a whole lot of time to place it. Good quarterback pressure from the inside linebacker, Mike James, who had that big game at LSU a couple of weeks ago. Both these young quarterbacks display maturity beyond their years, and we haven't seen Stewart today in this game, but in watching him on film, both obviously very confident, very proficient, believe in what they can do and have the leadership ability to get it done. Third and ten for the Volunteers. Low ball and Kent's got it. And that's a first down to the 32 of Mississippi State. There was no way that ball was going to be picked off that was delivered so low. Now, Tennessee has one timeout left. In the final minute, Manning, and unable to grab it was Moses Phillips. Philip Fulmer, sometimes decisions are made for you, and uh, with Todd Helton limping off the field, it looks like uh, one's been made for Philip. And he's going to have to have to now go with. Uh, one or both of the freshmen. And they're in Bexford's field goal range. Now they really are. Kent again. And he's inside the 15-yard line. Andre Bennett, the free safety, brought him down after an 18-yard gain. Pretty obvious who Peyton Manning's favorite receiver is. First down. And he slams it into the turf to stop the clock. 39 seconds to go. So 
Tennessee stopping the clock and right back to it. Good job of avoiding the jam by Joey Kent finds that open space Curry can't bring him down and Bennett finally corrals him takes him to the ground but now we have a second and 10 situation here with 39 seconds left to go at the 15 of the Bulldogs four wide receivers <laughs> and the Bulldogs across the line of scrimmage in a hurry was it them or was there movement. You know, now that I see this, you know, one of the things that you always had to watch with Archie Manning when you were playing him was he was a master at the snap count. You know what I'm saying? The in intonation. He was a master at getting people to jump. And uh, this time, <laughs> the center got him to jump. Good job, Bubba, but I don't think you can do that. But I know that uh, Peyton probably has that same ability to get those guys moving. Second and 15 at the 20. To the right side he goes. Same man, Joey Kent. Walt Harris bumping him out of bounds. That'll stop the clock with 32 seconds remaining. Joey Kent, a freshman all SEC last year with, with 10 catches. And obviously, he may get that many in this drive. <laughs> Billy Williams not here. Billy Williams having some physical problem and not on the trip. He's got five catches for 66 yards on this drive. Third and 13. Up top. Man open. And it's Joey Kent again with a volunteer touchdown. Great touch by Peyton Manning. Walt Harris trying to figure and they had five wide receivers out there. Peyton Manning was able to see it right away. Nobody getting any depth. Harris trying to get over to help out, but it seems as though Manning saw it before anybody did it. MSU, and he laid it in there. Harris complaining he thought he had knocked the ball out, but six points for Tennessee. And seventh with the point after by John Bexford. Could be a changing of the guard we're witnessing here in Starkville for the volunteers today. Sometimes when you're forced to make these selections and plays, you see Kent coming off the ball. Nobody's jamming him, nobody's near him, and that is obviously just a, a, a missed assignment in the MSU secondary. Had five wide receivers in the game, and Walt Harris did his best to get there, but you got to give Manning a lot of credit for seeing that and finding it. Dexter will pooch another one to the 20. And Chaston Coleman has about seven yards on the return. Jaston Coleman, a junior wide receiver who sees some action on special teams for the dogs. And so Tennessee has the seven point lead back. We're in the closing moments of the second quarter. That was a 78 yard drive over three minutes and five seconds engineered by Peyton Manning. Only 13 plays to go all that far. And on seven of those plays, Joey Kent caught passes. He had a good month. In three minutes. He caught, as we mentioned, he caught 10 all last year. Bowie. And he'll get about three yards out to the 30. Mississippi State has a timeout left, but it looks like Jackie Sherrill doesn't want to take any chances deep in his own territory. And the first half will end with Tennessee scoring late in each quarter and leading 14 7 via the air from the freshman arm of Peyton Manning. Young man who was the high school national player of the year all American last year threw for better than 7200 yards and 92 touchdowns in his high school career and he's got his first two division one touchdown passes here. And Tennessee fans are here today and they've seen Todd Helton come out in street clothes and crutches. After only four passes. Not quite one quarter of action today and his day came to a close. Mississippi State will kick it off. Milo Sylvan back at his own five yard line. 
and he's got it short kick that came up at the 13 breaks it and he's out to the 37 maybe the 38 yard line James Holloway with his third special team tackle today Sean Taylor by the way a senior out of West Point took that kickoff for Mississippi State and Peyton Manning comes out after an outstanding first half. And sometimes you go through a decade without losing a quarterback, without having a serious injury to a, a top performer, and, and sometimes uh, you run into a season like this that Tennessee's run into. You lose two good quarterbacks. David Horn, the tight end, shifting, and then James Stewart on the carry, breaking a tackle of the line of scrimmage, and Wesley Lisi had to get him down from behind. Talking to Kippy Brown before the game, uh, the receiver coach for Tennessee. And, and as you reflect on that UCLA game, their opening game, they played four quarterbacks. I mean, has Tennessee ever played four quarterbacks in a game that was, you know, up for grabs? It wasn't 50 to nothing? Not lately. Now with a guy named Schuler. James Stewart again. Volunteers are just across midfield. First down at the 49 of Mississippi State. Play action. Manning smoothly out to the wing. And the tight end, David Horn, has his second catch of the day. Eighth tackle by the free safety, Andre Bennett. And that's another first down covering 11 yards. You know, and I know that uh, Peyton as Archie will tire of comparisons and all of that type of thing. And, uh, but there is a certain amount of mystique that goes with Peyton Manning because of his father, I'm sure. And, uh, and he seems to be uh, mature enough to handle that and use that to the advantage of the team. Dad and All-American back in 69 and 70 for that other team. Up the road, the Rebels of Ole Miss. First down at the 39. Manning with a quick drop and a poke fake. And his man was open momentarily, but there was some good help from free safety by Andre Bennett. Todd Hilton's status, we Bennett. saw him in street clothes. Bob Kessling, what's the story? Yeah, we talked to Todd on the way to the bench. He said basically this is just a precaution. It twisted a little bit. He wanted to make sure I told his mom and dad that he's okay and will probably home for supper tomorrow after church. That's covering all the bases, Todd. Yes, sir. <laughs> Second and 10 at the 39. A little swing to the right side for Stewart. He's got room. And he's down to the 25 and beyond. That's a play they ran early, and they kept coming up with blocking in the pack on it, you know. And that time Jeff Smith was out there in front again. And he is really something. He was all SEC in 93, and he's a big guy, 310 pounds. You're going to see him come into the picture there. There's a guy that started on his high school team when he was in eighth grade. <laughs> so he's been good for a while. <laughs> down at the 24. Crowd quiet here in Starkville, but not now. It's picked off by Walt Harris. That's his second of the year and the ninth of his career. And he's only a junior out of LaGrange, Georgia. Big play man who is selected all SEC in the preseason. Good disguise by Bill Clay secondary. They're actually in double zone, and so there's a jam on the wide receiver, and Walt Harris began to get some depth on it, and uh, Peyton tried to knife that one in, and it just wasn't enough room for that one there. First interception against Peyton Manning. Talking to Randy Sanders on the sideline. Bulldogs at their own 12. Tate into the belly of Bowie. And the ball's on the ground. Was the whistle blown? The Volunteers have the football. Kevin Bowie sort of got lost in there. All of a sudden, while he was still straight up, the ball came out, and Sean Summers has recovered it. He's caused a fumble this year, and now he's recovered one. Got a bunch of fellas pulling on the ball, and Sean's down in there, and he got both hands on it. 
that obviously is not what Jackie wanted to see after uh, their last takeaway. Yeah, Walt Harris, who got the pick, and his buddies right back out there. And slipping and falling as he made his cut was Aaron Hayden. Reggie Wilson was there to contain him. Late in the first half, uh, Mississippi State defense took the ball away from Tennessee, and on the first play, they threw a pass, and it was intercepted by Ronald Davis, and now, again, Mississippi State takes the ball away from him, and they lose it after one play. Jimmy Miles shaken up for the second time today. Well, a damaging play for the Bulldogs as Jimmy Miles, their big defensive tackle, takes a shot to the knee. Watch number 98 in maroon. His left leg is out there, and it looks like Bubba Miller falls in there on it. Ooh. And they've taken Jimmy Miles off the field. On second down and nine, and a man open for the touchdown, John Sartell. And guess who put it into the end zone for him? Mississippi been very aggressive on defense, very thorough. And here's the little man, zip, up and in, touchdown, volunteers. Bexford for the point after. Great call by David Cutcliffe. Gives him a 14-point lead. Good execution, too, by, by the little man. Especially when it's this open, sometimes people can foul it up. But that time, Stewart just kind of laid it out there, and Horn made the catch. 14 yards on that touchdown pass. And the short kick taken at the 15-yard line. Angling to the near side with some room is Shaston Coleman. That's the second time he's returned a short kick today. He's got a 27-yarder that time. First down for the Bulldogs. They've got good field position at their own 42, and it's molds to the far side. Play action for Tate. Breaks one tackle. Then the same man comes back to get him. Raymond Austin, the strong safety. This volunteer defense has been tough. Through the first three games this year, they had given up an average of 333 per game through the air. Mississippi State in the first half had run motion to the wide side and then tossed the ball wide side. So the Tennessee defensive staff, they blitzed the strong safety this time from the wide side of the field, anticipating action that way. It was a play action pass, and Summers makes the sack. Second down and 14. Tate with time to sit in there. And he rifles it straight ahead. Kenny Causey, number 80. Third and three. Tate out to the corner and unable to get to the marker was Fred McCrary. Ronald Davis, the right corner, was on him out there. And some state fans are already hollering go, as in go for it. And the punting team started on the field, stopped, then they go, and now they come back again. Jackie says, let's go for the first down. A lot of people talk about how the offensive coordinators and defensive guys run the show, but not on decisions like this. Tate to Davis. Stop cold. But where will they mark his progress? Steve White, the right defensive end, was in there to plug it up. Scott Gallion was in there as well. Where they have it marked, it's very, very close. This could be a matter of inches. couple of inches the Mississippi State drive will continue Jackie's had to make a few of those decisions in his 17 years <laughs> and after that play he was taking a deep breath because uh, it was a fine job by the Tennessee defensive front and uh, only a little extra effort by Michael Davis got it in there yeah you give it back to Peyton Manning and company at midfield it could be in the end zone in a hurry now Tate on first down 
Yes to Eric Moles out the left side. Eric Moles coming off a career high day. Five catches for 95 yards two weeks ago against LSU. And Moles is a lot like uh, Eddie Kennison from LSU and uh, several other receivers in this league that just want to get him the ball out on the corner and let him move. First down just inside the 34 and there's Davis straight ahead. Michael Davis went to Bruce Arians and said to him look at he started against LSU and he said I didn't play well and I don't deserve to start you know start booey let me try to earn the job back and that's the kind of guy Michael Davis is and uh, he is certainly running with a lot more authority here this afternoon. He is a north south runner. Forget about getting outside. Five yard average today. Bolts motioning. Second and one. And that's a pretty routine first down. Ben Talley on the tackle. But Michael Davis at 6'1, 222 can take on those linebackers. What the Tennessee defense doesn't have this year that it's had in the past is the big play stopper defensive lineman the Todd Kelly Chris Mims a guy that can just go after and get you and you have to you have to occupy him with two players or at least a, a tackle and a fullback three wide receivers on first down just outside the 20 Davis the call again look at him feel his way through and he's got about six tough yards talking at John Chavis before the game too, the linebacker coach he's you know they've got four guys working hard up there good read by Davis good adjustment on the block of big number 68 Purvis Hunt but you got guys in the developmental stage and it just there's nothing that can take the place of experience in terms of of the learning curve second time in the attacking zone today second and five for the dogs and a quick opener to Davis. He's got a first down. He's inside the 10. It'll be first and goal for State. Derek Tate keeping it simple. Handed to 37 and look for that big offensive line to get it done. And this is what Mississippi State did against Mississippi last year. Davis carried the ball 40 times. And uh, now some people would say, well, gee whiz, that's not real creative, but it also wins football games. And sometimes you just have to do what works, whether it's innovative or not. Same guy. Broke a tackle down to the five yard line. Shane Burton had him. Now check it, it was 64. Steve White, not 84 Burton. And when Bruce Arians was the head coach at Temple, they had a guy there named Paul Palmer who led the nation in rushing. So he's, you know, he's used to calling run after run after run, and it doesn't bother him that much. Michaels run the ball six times for 29 yards on this drive. Second and goal from the five. Look strong side left. That's where Davis goes. And that's where Davis scores. <laughs> Impressive drive by the Bulldogs, and Davis gets it for the final five. Watch number 72 there, Jesse James. He walls out Steve White, and then the rest. It's up to Michael Davis who bulldozes his way into the end zone. Well, some tough running. Michael Davis on that drive, seven carries, 34 of the 58 yards they went. Brand new ball game, 21 14. And a kickoff into the end zone for the first time today. Nilo Sylvan choosing not to run it out. And there's Brandon Stewart. The true freshman out of Stephenville, Texas, who is the Southwest Player of the Year in high school last season. Two years ran for 37 touchdowns and threw for 41. And it's Aaron Hayden off the right side with good yardage. They still can't get him down. 
and he's out to the 43 yard line. 23 on the carry. Charlie Davidson, the right corner, had to ride him for a while. Good job of running by Stewart on the last series, and now Hayden is in there. And you see Curry getting caught up inside, and Andre Bennett missing. Good job of running by Aaron Hayden. Freshman All-American three years ago, only 500 yards since. He's had some knee problems. Great to see him breaking them like that. Manning looking up the field, and he zings it a little bit too far ahead. Excuse me, that was Brandon Stewart. Looked like Nilo Sylvan was the man. He was trying to get the ball, too. Brandon Stewart, 6'2", 210. Philip Fulmer told Bob Kessling at halftime we'd see both quarterbacks. Philip has a, uh, a difficult job here. You've got two very, very talented young men that uh, you want to get both get playing time. You want both to be happy. And a little flare out to the left side. That's Maurice Staley. And he's across midfield. Staley's another true freshman from North Carolina. Yeah, he's out of Charlotte. Catching his second pass of the season, had one against Florida last week. Good, fake, good, good hustle out there by another true freshman. Third down and one at the 48 of the Bulldogs. And a quick give to Stewart for the first down. That's about as sure a thing in this league as there is right now. Third and one, and you give it to James Stewart. Boy, he has been running with reckless abandon, both these guys. I think they're just glad to see the ball again. They came in on its true freshman and got a lot of yards and got to handle the ball a lot, and all of a sudden Charles Garner showed up, and that was that was it for a while. And Charlie, a two-year guy who got up in the top five of Tennessee rushing all time. Look at Hayden put a move on. Torrance Jackson really didn't know which way to go to try to stop Aaron Hayden. Hayden out of Mumford High School in Detroit. Having a good third quarter here as Tennessee chews up that clock. Down to 4.45 remaining. Volunteers lead it 21-14. Second down and five. So we've got a true freshman out there now changing the play. Good decision. First down. Great work by the Tennessee offensive front. Jason Lehman, Kevin Mays, Bubba Miller, Jeff Smith, Leslie Ratliff. A true freshman who backs up Lehman, Jarvis Rito, saw some time at left tackle last week against Florida. Got to be fun to run behind those guys. Look at that average for Aaron Hayden today. Rito was in there on the screen earlier in this particular drive. And Hayden will get outside. He'll do a little spin move after Charlie Davidson was the first man to get him. And then it took Dwayne Curry and Paul Lacoste to finish him off. And let's get it downstairs where Bob Kessling will talk about some of that play in the trenches. Yeah, you talked about Jarvis Rito playing a little bit. Also right now, Tennessee has Robert Poole, another freshman in there at right tackle, and Trey Peterson at right guard. Philip Fulmer's want to develop some depth, and this is a chance for some of the younger guys to get a chance to play when the game's on the line. Poole out of Birmingham, Peterson out of New Smyrna Beach, Florida. Nothing much there for Aaron that time. Larry Williams. Third string guy at that nose tackle where Arlie Gibson played so well for Mississippi State for a couple of years. All SEC performer there. Boy, they were strong up the middle, weren't they, Tim, with Arlie Gibson and Juan Long right behind him? Oh, you bet. And, you know, whenever Pete Jenkins is around, he's a defensive line coach here. He's had set 24 guys to the pros, and he's, uh, he's a quality technique coach a couple of freshman wide receivers out there Nash and Staley and the ball is intercepted Johnny Harris <laughs> 14-0 <laughs> 
15 yards on the return as Johnny Harris has the first INT of the season for him. He had a couple last year against the Arkansas Razorbacks. 2.51 to go. Third quarter, Tennessee looked like they were going to score. Dilla Fulmer's team appeared to be ready to score to take control of this football game. But now Jackie Sherrill got the big turnover. The INT by Johnny Harris and good field position for the Bulldogs. That's Bowie. Pretty good defense by the Volunteers. Leland Taylor. The first man to get there. We haven't heard much from the right tackle today. And there's Johnny Harris who got his third pick of his career a moment ago. I think you'll see Tally upfield on that tackle too. He guns it down over the middle. Stewart does just a little bit behind the wide receiver, Marcus Nash. And Johnny Harris makes a beautiful play. Looks like Leland Taylor, the sophomore out of Louisville, is shaken up. Trey Teague. In there to help out up front for Tennessee, a redshirt freshman out of Jackson, Tennessee. Tate under pressure, has to unload it and does. Bowie runs into a blocker and then is tackled from behind. Corey Stone, the left tackle. After quarterback pressure from the right end, Steve White. Well, they're trying to set up a screen, and the idea is that you hit the defensive lineman and then slide to the outside. But, you know, White got right around the corner on Jesse James, and he wasn't able to slow him down at all. And, of course, this messed up the timing of the play. And, but he got it to Bowie. Great athletic maneuver by Tate. And then the Tennessee defense converged. Third down and 10 at the 45. Tate has to scramble a bit. Anybody open? Oh, what a hit it was. Michael Brown, the intended receiver, and just as the ball got there, so did Jason Barker. And this is always dangerous. Nobody open. Tate is flushed. Looks back across the middle. Michael Brown coming. Parker coming. Parker being one of the best defensive backs in the country unloads on the wide receiver and an incompleted pass. Now we're going to punt it away. John Summers inside his 15. Andy Russ tees it up a low wobbling spiral and a fair catch at about the 12 and a half. Peyton Manning is back as the Tennessee quarterback. And out to the left side, Jay Graham. Jay Graham, your ball carrier. Graham broke a 21 yarder against Florida a week ago. And Peyton Manning at 60% throwing so far. Couple of touchdowns, one at the end of each quarter in the first half. Interception here in the second half. And he's read very effectively, too. Philip Fulmer talking to Mark Bradley there on the sideline, the tight end coach. First down play, Graham again, patiently waiting for some daylight to open up ahead. You know, sometimes running backs just have to be a little patient back there and wait for things to develop. And the sophomore did that very well. Some of them are so talented and they get to the hole so fast, they just have to learn to take it easy. Let the line work. And they don't have to do it all themselves like they did in high school. They got people that can help along and just use the assistance. Six yards there on first down. And suddenly they've caught Graham's number three times in a row. Let's go. Let's go. Well, from Kannapolis, North Carolina, Jay Graham rushed four. 4,000 yards in high school, scored 57 touchdowns, and so that would be a good guy to give the ball to, I guess. Here's the third one coming up. Will they get the playoff? Five seconds left in the quarter. And the clock goes to zero. 
So the fourth quarter will get underway with Tennessee at its own 33 yard line and nursing a 21 14 lead. 15 minutes to go. We welcome you back to Scott Field in Starkville, where the seventh largest crowd ever to see a football game is in attendance, better than 41,000. Third down and one for the Volunteers. And it's obvious the first down has been attained by James Stewart. The ball is on the ground, and Mississippi State gets it. Charlie Davidson who came up Al Cotton can't stop James Stewart and he keeps driving and he keeps driving and Charlie Davidson keeps working to pull the ball out and a fumble and caused and a fumble recovered big play by Charlie Davidson both in Alabama and off the left side Michael Davis there he goes inside the 30. Once again the Tennessee defensive staff concerned about running to the wide side of the field sends Raymond Austin. You're going to see him come into your screen on the right there. He slid by Michael Davis. Gallion can't hold on and now get Davis gets to the perimeter. Davis with a 5.4 average today. Two yards better per carry than his career average. Tate. Little pitch to Davis on the outside. He'll get six or so. That might have been a busted play that turned into something pretty good looking. Leaving the Taylor back in the game. We we understand that it was simply leg cramps, and so he's back in there. Yeah, there. You're carrying 6'3, 285. That's a team of Charlie horses. Second and three. Tate to Davis. Big hole up the middle. And he's got the first down. Tackle five of the day for Ben Talley. Got to give number 57, Dan Hoover, a lot of credit here. A guy that's playing for the injured Brian Anderson. And uh, you see him working there. Good job. And then. Michael Davis, who is who is 225 pounds, disappears behind Purvis Hunt. And Jackie Sherrill looks on. And there's Hoover, 57, the sophomore from Fairhope, Alabama. Snapping the football. Davis again. And he ran right into Leland Taylor. But they are really doing a job up front of these Bulldogs. Good job by Ainsworth. Davis stumbles a little bit. But that offensive line, Denver Johnson's here at Mississippi State is working very effectively. Second down and seven. Davis alone back there. He did well to get a couple of yards. Tyrone Hines got there first. Davis spun around and heading south managed to get beyond the line of scrimmage. Phil Fulmer very successful as a head coach in, uh, in his interim period with Tennessee uh, while Johnny Majors was uh, ill and then last year in his first season looking for the Citrus Bowl. And been an assistant at Tennessee since 1980. Shotgun on third and five. Tate will do it himself. And he's down to the seven yard line with a first down. That's the 36th time today Mississippi State has run the football. And if they keep running it, they might be unbeatable. That's been their history. Well this is a play that Tennessee likes down at this this end of the field and uh, this position on the field and Tate even though he's gimped up gets a first down first and goal at the seven molds in motion Davis with the ball and he's met right at the line of scrimmage by Tyrone Hines. 
Tyler Rhodes really his first year. All state tight end defensive end at Haydenwood County High School in Brownsville, Tennessee. As we told you, he didn't even play last year when he redshirted. Got the grades in order two years ago so he could get on the squad. No gain. Thanks to number 47, it'll be second and goal from the seven. Query the fullback leading the way. Davis on the pitch and he's down to the five. Well, due to his ankle problem, I don't think that he is much of a threat to really run the ball, to turn sideways and cut it upfield. He did, he did a good job on the on the draw, but to plant on that left ankle and head upfield, I don't think that's going to happen. So it just turns into a delayed toss to Michael Davis in the option. Shows up. Third and goal from the five. Bulldogs looking to tie the game. Tate with time, and it's intercepted at the one yard line by Ronald Davis. Flag on the play. It appears the officials are spotting the ball at the one. Was there an offside against Tennessee on the play? It might have been Jesse Sanders who is trying to shoot the gap to blitz from linebacker. It'll be third and goal from the two. Half the distance to the goal line as Tennessee continues to experience injuries in that secondary. Oh what a play by Tyrone Hines. Second tackle in the last couple of plays his fifth of the day and he read that one beautifully. It looks like State will settle for the field goal try. Great defense by Tennessee. You know, in the past several years, they've made the big plays when they've had to, and that certainly was a big play in this game. Tim Rogers, a transfer from Navy. And he's got it. A 21-yarder from the far hash. And with 9.32 remaining, Tennessee keeps the lead, but Mississippi State makes it a little bit closer. It's 21-17, Volunteers. Todd Helton in street clothes. Depending on young quarterbacks, both coaches, Tate of Mississippi State, Manning and Stewart of Tennessee, Nilo Sylvan on the kickoff return. No! Maybe to the 14. Peyton Manning back in there for the Volunteers. Stewart the gift. He couldn't get outside. He cut up inside the corner beautifully. Andre Bennett came up to force and he just cut right inside his right shoulder pad. Mississippi State has its safeties playing awfully close to the line of scrimmage and, uh, and I'm not sure if it's a disguise or if they're up that close to make sure they can support the run game. But if they stay there the ball is going to be thrown down the middle as you see James Stewart go to the sideline. After gaining five. Aaron Hayden the tailback behind Peyton Manning. He's got the give. He goes left side and he spins off Johnny Harris. And that'll be a first down for the volunteers. Then this is the part of the ball game when that experience in that offensive line really becomes important. And this is a group of guys offensively that have been together for you know, all last year and some of them even started the year before that. So I mean it's a group that is really molded and sticks tight together. First down at the 28. Hayden cracked down. Looked like Corey Sears who's backing up Jimmy Miles shaking up and left tackle was in on it. Now, Corey is a junior college transfer from Navarro in Texas. And now last week it didn't do him much good being a group that was molded well together, you know, against uh, against Florida and that the defensive front that and the effort that they put forth. But against a more inexperienced line like this Mississippi State, it's going to help a lot. Second and seven. Play action by Manning up top, long up the left side, and a little bit too far. He was looking down there for number 89. 
88 Courtney Epps. And that was a timing route. Manning just went back to throw it, and laid it up down the left side there. Davidson in good shape, ran right with him. Epps wasn't able to separate from him. Here's a big play in the game. Tennessee has to keep the football. Third down and seven. Manning, lots of time. In traffic, he's oh. got Joey Kent. And he's inside the 40 of Mississippi State with his eighth catch of the day. You've got to have a strong arm to throw the ball into traffic like this. And you have to have a lot of confidence to throw it in traffic like this. And I'm sure if he'd have seen everybody that was converging on the ball, he wouldn't have thrown it into traffic like that. But he did, and uh, Kent came out with the ball, and big, big play for Tennessee. What a day for Joey Kent, the sophomore out of Huntsville. 108 yards in catches. Manning out to the left side where he has a man open, and that's Kendrick Jones. Jones getting a chance to start today because of the leg bruise that has Billy Williams out of there. Billy Williams uh, was hurt on the first play of the UCLA game, has been trying to play hurt, has caught eight passes since, but had to be held out of this one. Look at that. He had six of those receptions on a touchdown drive in the second quarter. First down at the 26. Manning to Hayden. Wow. A couple of Bulldogs were there. Paul Lacoste, number 20, and Dwayne Curry, 44. Looked like he ran into a wall and went straight backwards. Yeah, big hit there by Curry. Lacoste was there to help out, but Curry put the hit on him. Wayne Curry had seven straight double-digit games interrupted by leg cramps two weeks ago. Second and nine at the 25. Hayden drops the ball. The Bulldogs say they've got it, and they And a big turnover with 6.02 to go. Tate fakes it to Davis. Plenty of time. And then he finds Bernard Ewell. That's out beyond the 45-yard line. 17-yard gain. Ewell was the motion man on that play. And he motioned right into a nice pattern. Michael Brown heading up the field, cleared it out for Ewell. Good throw by Tate. Down to Bob Kessling. On the move, Bob, it's all yours. Yeah, James Littleman Stewart uh, re injured a left ankle twist. They're retaping that. If you notice, Ron Dave, uh, Ronald Davis is back in the left corner. Uh, he had sprained his knee on that last series. They wanted to hold him out, put an ice pack on it. He said he wanted to come right back in the game, and he did. Tate with time to spare. Now he'll run it, and he'll angle out of bounds. At the 47 of Tennessee. So he'll get about six on that play. And that time, Chris Jones was taking Ronald Davis deep. And uh, he looks like he can run all right, Ronald Davis. Good job of protection by Mississippi State. Finally, Steve White is drawn across his face and take, takes off. But good coverage by the Tennessee secondary. They'll call it a seven yard gain and make it second and a long three. Eight to Davis. First down and more. He's down beyond the 32 yard line. A gain of 15. And the Bulldogs keep running that football very effectively. Nice block by McCrary in the hole, and then Davis really breaks some tackles. He just keeps powering his way along. He is out to prove something this afternoon. As we mentioned before, disappointed in his performance against LSU. He's not going to be disappointed in this performance. 
They've now run the ball 43 times today. Rolls in motion near side. No play action. Tate up top. Man open. And it's dropped in the end zone. Chris Jones with Sean Summers closing on him. And Summers got there just in time. Well, Chris Jones had Son Sean Summers beat, and this ball is a little underthrown. As a cornerback, you can't cover this route, really. I mean, play action away, you're drawn inside, but Jones was well behind him, and Summers fights his way back to make the play. Way to stay with it. I'm sure Tate thought he had it. Just a little underthrown. Second and ten. A little draw play off the shotgun and not much there for Michael Davis. We've got third and nine at the 30. And five DBs back there for Tennessee. Quarterback Tate is hit. And the ball is picked up by the Volunteers. Now the ball's dropped again and run down the field. And it ends up at the 41 yard line. Now there's a flag at the 48 of Mississippi State. Tennessee had actually put six defensive backs in the game. I'm not even sure they, I didn't know they had six defensive backs on the trip. Healthy. Right. Steve White with a big hit got all of that started. Illegal forward pass. He pitched the ball forward. Still first down this way after a five yard penalty. So the Bulldogs drive has been stalled by their fourth turnover. Aaron Hayden trying to get oh. outside. Might have had a face mask. Wesley Lisi was reaching for him and evidently Got the face guard. Five yard face mask added on to the end of the run, still first down. Flexible offensive line. Second down and five at the 47. Aaron Hayden again. Ball is on the ground, and the Bulldogs have it back. Looks like James Greer came up with it. Aaron Hayden was hit by Johnny Harris. And Greer, a redshirt freshman who backs up Michael Lindsay, a defensive end guy. Look at number Good 90 Harris in there. Hard to see when it came out there, but both defenses doing their job to create the plays that give the offense a chance to put this thing away. Plenty of time to go. Each team with two timeouts. Tate and a diving catch out on the right side by Eric Moles. That'll cover 12 yards and move it into Tennessee territory. What a crazy game this has been. Nine turnovers between the clubs, five by Tennessee. Clock runs with 325 remaining. Single back is Bowie. He's looking to go off the left side. And he was tripped up with the line of scrimmage by Bill Duff, number 50. Jackie Sherrill's trying to get a timeout on the sideline. Tate doesn't see him. 2.38 to go. Second and nine. With a shotgun. Little slant by Moles. Had one guy tugging his jersey, two others tackled him. That'll stop the clock as the chains move. With 2.27 remaining. Tate is a young quarterback and he is going to decide who he's going to throw it to and he's going to throw it in there and uh, he's got the the arm the velocity to deliver it on time. First down at the 28. Tate waiting and throwing it into a lot of 
traffic and it's a good thing he threw a sinker. And that's the other thing that's going to happen if if who he's looking for isn't there then there's no telling what's going to happen. And then he's going to see the f he's going to let it go at the first thing that's kind of maroon. It looks like there's no white shirts around it but it gets to be dangerous. Derek Tate came into this game just over 50 percent for the season. So he's had a good day. The turnovers have been a big stopper for both offenses though. If he can get this Tennessee defense locked up man to man and get a scramble on something like that. It appeared he was looking for a back who wasn't there. And that play will lose a yard or two. Troy Teague. Left defensive tackle who backs up Corey Stone in on the stop. And Tate is slow getting up. He's playing in a lot of pain. So I guess in terms of quarterback mobility, that's about, about it for Derek. He'll sit back there and throw it, but I guess he isn't going to run too far with it. And Mississippi State calls it second time out. With a minute 53 to go. Third and 12 after 30. Off the shotgun, Tate with time. Oh, and the ball was dropped. Kenny Causey was open. Found a big seam in that secondary. And now it's fourth down. Excellent read by Derek Tate. He came off his primary receiver, went to Causey. The ball was thrown behind him, but. Kenny Causey is the kind of receiver that usually makes that catch. Like a couple of other Bulldogs on this team. He was a freshman All SEC player. Well, the ball game may come down to this for the Bulldogs. Fourth and 12 at the 30. Tate up top and oh, it has it! Inside the 10! He beat Jason Parker in the air. There's a late flag down at the three yard line. We have a preliminary report that George Kidd has been ejected. He's going to the far bench right now. And it looks like Bowie is out too. Must have been doing some dueling downfield. Away from the pass. Clock is stopped with a minute 41 to go. It'll be first and goal for the Bulldogs at the eight yard line. What a play. What a catch by Moles. I mean, Derek Tate, let, he let this go. This is desperation here. He doesn't really put a lot of heat on it. He can't see anything. He's going down, and Moles comes in and makes that catch. Fantastic. In between Parker and the true freshman Terry Fair. And of course those players out for the first half of the next game. That's a blow to an already struggling Tennessee defense. And here we go first and goal from the eight for the Bulldogs with a minute 30 remaining. Tate. Little draw play Davis and he's inside the five. He'll slide down to the four. They've got one timeout remaining. Clock down to a minute 15. They're taking their time huddling up here. Well, there's a lot of time. Mississippi State would just as soon score on the last play of the game, I'm sure. Backs are split. Three wide receivers. Shotgun for Tate. Looking right side, up top. Too far for Molds. He was matched up with Ronald Davis out there on the right corner. Yeah, I would throw it someplace else. <laughs> Ronald Davis is, you know, got three catches for the day. That's enough. <laughs> It'll be third and goal from the four. They've got to have the touchdown. Five of Mississippi State's greatest victories ever in their history have come at the expense of the Volunteers. Three of those in Knoxville, two in Memphis. They're looking for the first one on campus. Down to 
you've got Moles over on Terry Fair. Davis cuts it back. He was headed for the end zone before he ran into a pile of players. Jackie Sherrill will use his final timeout, and it'll be fourth and goal when we come back. 40 seconds to go, and the ball game is coming down to this play. Fourth and goal for Mississippi State. The 11th play of this drive after the turnovers, and it's at the Tennessee two-yard line. Fake to Davis. Tate. Touchdown! Kendall Watkins, the tight end! Was the old tight end delay, Bob. Wilkins just hit out into the linebacker, then ran off to the side. Big play, Jackie Sherrill, of course, excited. Watch the big tight end. Sticks into Shane Burton, then drifts out in the flat. Sanders can't get there in time, and he gets lost in the action. Touchdown. Mississippi State. Kind of hard to lose a tight end who's 6'2, 299, but he was lost long enough. He has his second career touchdown catch. A senior out of Jackson. Didn't get to play two years ago because of knee surgery. Caught six balls last year. Spent the entire year blocking. And it may be the most glorious moment of his career. And that was an important extra point because now Tennessee, if they get a field goal, could only tie. 24 21 Bulldogs with 36 seconds to go. An 11 play, 52 yard drive. Well, you got Eric Moles there. You've got a quarterback that can scramble. You've got Chris Jones, who's a leading wide receiver. And you've got Kendall Watkins, who caught six passes last year. Jim Rogers on the kickoff. Pooch it. Ball is coming down. Nobody touches it. Now it's on the ground. And the Bulldogs have it. Nobody from Tennessee took charge. And Byron McCall, a senior linebacker, picked it up. Special teams players dream about situations like that. And Mississippi State just has to run off the clock. Tennessee's turned it over six times. They do have two timeouts remaining. Well, congratulations to the Bulldog staffs on offense. Bruce Arians, Ricky Black, Rick Christofel, Jimmy Helms, and Denver Johnson. And on defense, Bill Clay, Pete Jenkins, Ken Pope, and Jim Tompkins. And there's a, a head coach that's uh, awfully disappointed with the performance of his team. And I'm sure that he will use this as a lesson for them as they move into the rest of the season. Second down. Tennessee can stop the clock one more time, according to our count. If they choose to do so. And they evidently will with 17 seconds to go. And the celebration is about to begin in Starkville. Well, Bob, you know, it started out as a strange game. It was like Tennessee had tons of field position in the first quarter. Mississippi State didn't look like they could get anything going. It was strange. And then all of a sudden, Peyton Manning Hits Jones and it's 76 yards, seven to nothing. And then Mississippi State wakes up, makes a long drive, 
And then in the second half, Mississippi State goes to the ground with that man right there, Michael Davis and McCrary leading the way and the, a patchwork offensive line that just performed exceptionally well. Kneeling on it again is Derek Tate. And it looks like the finest hour for the Bulldogs on campus in many years. They beat Tennessee 